Hello, this is Keith from IELTS Speaking Success. And in this episode of Native Speakers Doing IELTS, I put Vanessa from Speak English with Vanessa on the hotspot by asking her to do the IELTS speaking test. There's lots to learn about simplicity and natural language in IELTS. Let's jump straight into it. So first of all, hi, Vanessa. Um, I'm delighted to be here with you today. Um, maybe to begin, you could tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Sure. Well, my name is Vanessa. And like you, I teach English online, this whole new world of the classroom on the internet. And at the moment, I make YouTube videos for free for anyone who wants to learn English, but also have some courses available on my website for those that want to dig a little deeper. It's a very fulfilling and enjoy, enjoying, I enjoy it and it's a creative job. Fantastic. I must say your YouTube channel is fantastic. I mean, I send students there to learn all sorts of stuff, vocabulary, pronunciation. I think it's great. Well, thanks so much. Brilliant. Um, fantastic. Well, Vanessa, today we're going to be doing, well, you're going to be doing the IELTS test. Um, okay. <laughs> and I will be your examiner for the day. Um, and just to let everybody know, Vanessa has not seen the questions. So no. this is a complete surprise, maybe shock. <laughs> I, I hope it won't be too terrible. I feel a little nervous. I can understand how students feel right now. No, it's going to be absolutely a piece of cake, I'm sure. Let's begin. So, <clears throat> hi, good morning. Can you tell me your hi. full name, please? <laughs> yes, my name is Vanessa Prothi. Fantastic. What shall I call you? Vanessa is great. Great, Vanessa. So in the first part of this test, I'm going to ask you some questions about yourself. Um, let's first talk about your house. So do you live in a house or a flat? At the moment, I live in an apartment. But this is kind of a transitionary time for me because I will be moving into a house in two months. So I'm really excited to do that. Great. And what's your favorite room? I would say my favorite room in the house is uh, li the living space. It's where we spend most of our time. So it's filled with personal mementos and lots of good memories. Okay. Is there anything you want to change about that room? It would be really nice if this room opened up into the kitchen. And this is what's going to happen at our future house is the kitchen. When you're in the kitchen, you'll be able to look into the living space. Because I have a toddler, it's really nice to always keep an eye on him. But when I'm in the kitchen, I can't see him in the living space. So I would love if those two rooms could be kind of combined, which they will in the future. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'd like to move on now to talk about pets. Do you have a pet? I do. In fact, I have two pets. I have two cats and right now they are cuddling together. <laughs> One is a black cat with some white markings and the other cat is a white cat with some black markings. So they're the perfect combination. Right. And do you like animals? I do like animals, but I don't often like the upkeep of animals. So I love visiting other people who have dogs. Today I visited a farm so I could see some goats and chickens. Mm. My toddler loves animals too, so it's good to visit, but it's not always nice to have to do the daily upkeep. <laughs> Did you have a pet as a child? Yes, I had a few pets, but the main pet that I had was a cat, a Siamese cat named Dodger, who in fact lived for 18 years and he passed away just two years ago and we got him when I was in middle school. So he had a long, amazing life. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, I'm going to move on now to talk about rubbish. So, what do people usually do with rubbish in your country? Well, in the US, we often call this trash. <laughs> <laughs> and usually people just throw their trash in the trash can, but it's becoming more popular to recycle. And we often, for example, in my house, we have a trash can for things that can't be recycled. And then we have a recycling bag where we put glass bottles or plastic containers. 
but there's often some scandal in different cities about if the recycling is actually being recycled. So some people feel really skeptical and don't even recycle. But for me, I try to do that. <laughs> right. So what do you think when you see rubbish or trash on the roads? When I see trash on the road, I usually wonder what kind of people could throw their trash on the ground and not pick it up. It's kind of mind-blowing to me that this simple act of picking up your trash, someone wouldn't do. For me, it's a no-brainer. Of course, I'll pick up my trash, but it's amazing some people don't feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever recycle paper and plastic? Yes, I often recycle mm -hmm. paper and hard plastics, but in my city, something like a plastic bag, these kind of soft plastics, we can't recycle. So we have to just throw them out or try to at least reuse a plastic bag a couple times before throwing it out. Right, okay, great. So I'm gonna move on now to give you a, a topic um, and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. So you have one minute to prepare for this and you can take some notes if you wish. All right. You have paper and pencil. I do, right. I'm ready. <laughs> Fantastic. So I will, I will tell you your topic. I'd like you to describe a friend or a person who encouraged you to achieve a goal. Okay. Are you ready? So <laughs> remember, okay. you have one to two minutes. Don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when the time is up. When you're ready, you can start talking. All right. Well, I would like to talk about someone who was more than a friend to me because, in fact, she was actually my French professor in college. And my French professor in college encouraged me to reach a goal that not many of her students really, truly, passionately wanted to reach, which was speaking French as naturally as possible. And I was part of one of her advanced French classes, even though I didn't know any French, it was the only class that was available. And the other students in the class weren't so interested in actually answering her questions and participating. So I dropped out of the class and asked her personally if she could help me during her office hours time. And she said, yes, thankfully, and twice a week, I went into her office and she asked me, Vanessa, how was your week? what are you doing this coming weekend? Just simple questions in French and I didn't understand any of it. <laughs> and she helped me really start from the beginning, step by step, trying to speak in French, say something in French. And after a couple months, I kind of caught on a little bit more. And I told her after I graduate, I want to do more with French. How can I go to France? What can I do? I thought maybe I could teach English there. And she gave me a wonderful idea which was to become an au pair in France. Now in the US, the idea of being an au pair, which is like a nanny, is not common. I'd never heard of that before, but my French professor showed me the website and she helped me to sign up, create a profile. I got a lot of responses from families, but a lot of the responses were in French and my level was quite low. <laughs> so this French professor helped me to go through the different profiles, find the families that seemed trustworthy and legitimate. And I found one family. We got in contact with each other. We messaged each other. My professor helped me to contact them and try to explain my needs and their needs and do some translating in the process. And in the end, when I graduated, I went to live with them for a year. The sad thing is that I lost contact with that professor, so I don't know where she is now. I would I'm love to tell her you thank there. you. <laughs> I'm going to do the horrible examiner bit. I have to stop you there. Thank you. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> We're now going to move on to okay. three. So we've been talking about a person who encouraged you to achieve a goal. Um, I'd like to ask you more, more questions related to that. Let's talk first of all about encouragement and motivation in schools. How can we motivate children to study? How can we motivate children to study? I feel like this is the question of every teacher. Every teacher asks themselves, how can I help my students to study? I feel like motivation comes from within, but if you have a little bit of interest, a good teacher can bring that out. So I think that a teacher can 
bring out an interest in study by making the topic accessible and interesting and fun, especially for children. Kids want to have fun and that's the best way for it to stick in their brains and have them want to study math or want to study about birds or grammars to make it fun, maybe even make it a game. <laughs> Great. Um, what can teachers do to motivate adult students to study hard? Sure. I think for adults, it's a little bit different than with children because adults usually have a tangible goal that they're trying to reach. So if an adult wants to study English, for example, and they want to get a better promotion or move to a different country, this is something tangible that usually self propels them <laughs> to mm -hmm. study and be motivated. I think that the teacher, of course, needs to make sure the lessons will help the student to reach that goal. But I feel like usually the adult students are motivated enough in themselves to reach that goal without too many external factors. <laughs> right. Do you think that um, people are less motivated to study nowadays than in the past? Oh, I would say not necessarily because we still have goals that we want to achieve. I think that the traditional method of studying could possibly be less interesting to students nowadays because of the internet. But in general, we all still have goals that we want to achieve and we need to learn about cars if we want to be a mechanic or learn about English if you want to do international relations. So there's still things we need to achieve. We still have to study to get there, but it's maybe a different method of studying. Right. Let's talk about encouragement and motivation at work. <clears throat> How, excuse me. <clears throat> How can employers um, have their workers to be well motivated at the workplace? I think one of the main things that has motivated me in the workplace and can motivate other people is feeling like your work truly matters and is important. And part of that is working together with other coworkers, feeling like your role in the company is valuable. And by having a good atmosphere in the company, you can feel like you are valuable. You're not just a cog in the machine. So helping each employee feel like their work is worthwhile could help propel mm -hmm. them to work more and work harder. Mm -hmm. Why do some people become demotivated? I think that some people lose motivation because they might lose sight of the long-term goal. For example, for me, sometimes in my work, teaching English, I get bogged down in some small details and I lose motivation to do the little t daily tasks that I need to do. But when I take a step back and look at the big picture of either helping people or growing the business or different financial goals that I want to meet, then I can gain that motivation back because I'm looking at the bigger picture. So hopefully it's the same for other people too. <laughs> Right. Great. And um, to what extent do you think technology has changed the, the motivation of people? I think that technology is a double-edged sword because in one sense, it has somewhat made us have shorter attention spans. We can easily click from one YouTube video to another without having to wait until Saturday at 7 p.m. to watch what we want to watch. It's always on demand. But at the same time, we can really delve into our own interests and study what we exactly want to study whenever we want. So if you are focused, you can really learn a lot in our modern society. I'm sorry, I kind of forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> It often happens. No, listen, that was a great answer. And actually, that brings us to the end of the IELTS test. Fantastic. Wow. Well done. Oh, Stop I my did it. You did it. You, you got there. How do you feel? I feel a little bit like there was a, a ball rolling down a hill and it was just going and going. <laughs> it's a strange feeling, right? Yeah. It, it's over, though. Whew. Okay. Yes. <laughs> So Listen, how, how did I do? What's, what's some feedback for me? Well, the, th <laughs> uh, the feedback is pretty good. No, it was really very, very good. Some very good answers. Some very interesting vocabulary. I was noticing a lot of collocations and phrasal verbs like stick at it and 
interesting idioms about propelling yourself forward, mm -hmm. which was kind of interesting. Some really nice language. Um, so, and I'm going to actually dissect it a little bit, if that's the right word, and put okay. some of these points up in the notes so people can look at the language. But what's interesting is it's not full of complex language. It, it's so much about kind of the, just the natural, simple language, the way that we, we speak normally. Um, mm. It gives you that fluency, and it, it doesn't have to be really, really complex, which I think is a, a common misunderstanding. It's just natural mm. language. I think that I personally, I don't know from your perspective, but from mine, it would be nice in my mind if I had practiced how to organize my answer, right. like starting with restating the question. I thought about that sometimes, but sometimes I didn't think about that. So I feel like if I were taking the IELTS exam and I were like practicing with you or practicing with someone, knowing how to organize my answer would help me not repeat myself or those types right. of things. Yeah. I didn't really think about that during the test, but Next time no, I'll prepare. <laughs> that's a really good point. Yeah, because that, that idea of topic development is one of the criteria. And so mm. it can knock you back if you are just kind of repeating or going around the houses, <laughs> as you say. I can <laughs> do that easily. Really. <laughs> so as we wind up here for the recording, Vanessa, um, for people who are watching this and they want to find out more about you and then the things that you're doing, where should they go to find you? They can go to speakenglishwithvanessa.com or just go to Speak English with Vanessa on YouTube. I don't have any IELTS material, but it's all just daily spoken English, which is great for expanding your fluency, which is good for IELTS as well. Hey, that's essential for IELTS. That's what people need. It's absolutely mm. brilliant. Great. Well, thank you very much, Vanessa. I really appreciate you coming and doing this here. This is brilliant. Um, oh, I'm sure it'd be so good much. for the students. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm sure your toddler is going to be waking up soon, right? Yeah, I should probably wake him up. Oh, he's wiggling. Okay, it's the Wiggle. sign. <laughs> it's the sign already. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you very much. Do stay in touch. So just once more, a big thank you to Vanessa for coming and doing the IELTS speaking test. Um, as I mentioned in the video and the podcast, you can see a full... Um, analysis of the well the questions and the answers and the language that Vanessa was using in the test um, some of that is in the YouTube um, show notes and also on my website if you go to IELTSSpeakingSuccess.com and you'll get a full analysis of everything that uh, Vanessa has used here. She really has some fantastic and useful videos on her YouTube channel if you want to improve your fluency um, expand your vocabulary, work on pronunciation. There's all sorts of stuff there. Um, check her out on her website also, um, speakenglishwithvanessa.com. And I will look forward to seeing you in our next episode of Native Speakers Do IELTS. Cheerio now.